If you ever messed up big. If you've ever felt ashamed. If you ever saw something you weren't supposed to. Or did something you weren't supposed to do. Then this is the episode for you. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Riley. Riley, are you familiar with the tradition we have here on The Loop Show that involves sugar coating? Yeah, I've heard about it, but we should remind everybody else what it is. Well, every once in a while, we like to talk about things that should not be sugar coated. Okay, I like that. So what do you mean exactly by sugar coating? See, sugar coating is a figure of speech that means to take an idea and to cover it in false sweetness to make it seem more appealing. Ah, so like hiding the real deal. Exactly. and. Our good friends are going to help us with a topic that requires less sugar coating. And what do we do? We eat something that should not be sugar coated. Oh, well, yeah, this, really. <laughs> oh, ravioli and ice cream. Yeah, gonna be gross. And every single time that you see this symbol, you are gonna shout out, don't sugar coat it. Let's practice. Don't, don't sugar coat it. All right, let's do it a little bit louder, ready? Wait for it. Don't sugar coat it. Okay, I don't mind saying that, but I do mind eating this. Yeah, that's kind of the point. Things are much better when you don't sugar coat it. Sin grows best in the dark. It wants you to hide. And so friends, we're not gonna sugar coat it. You messed up. You did something you weren't supposed to do. You saw something that you weren't supposed to see. Or maybe it was that you went somewhere that you weren't supposed to go. When you do things that you know that you're not supposed to do, sin, when we mess up, a lot of times that guilt, that shame, or even that embarrassment starts to come. And what I want you to know, though, is that you're not alone when you feel those feelings. We are not alone when we feel those feelings, right? David, famous David from the Bible, the one who dropped Goliath, that David, he messed up several times. And he didn't just mess up and then go on. He messed up and tried to hide it. We know that when we try to hide our sin, it only makes it worse. And so friends, what I want us to feel is I want us to be able to experience freedom from that guilt and from that shame and from that embarrassment. And the way that we get to do that is when we open up and talk about it. And so here's what I want for all of us. Remember that sin grows best in the dark. And so we're not gonna sugarcoat this, right? But now is the time for you to open up and talk about it so you can have a fresh start. A fresh start plan. Step one, confess. When you confess your sins, you let go of the burden of shame and let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. It's true freedom. Tell God what happened. Tell friends and trusted leaders. Stop carrying it around. Get it off your chest. Don't sugar coat it! Hello? <laughs> hey, Mom. Hey, do uh, you got a minute? Uh, yeah, what's going on? I wanted to kind of get something off my chest. Okay, what is it? I would roll the vacuum across the carpet, <laughs> but not turn it on. And then I told you that I did, so I kind of lied to you. So we climbed over a fence uh, that specifically said no trespassing. Uh, okay. We saw this car pull up that we didn't know, and right. it wound up being the manager. <laughs> we kind of just lied during that moment about what we were doing. Oh, and, oh, and you've been dealing with it for this long? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was around 4th of July, and um, we had some leftover fireworks and we blew up a porta potty and I never told you. Yeah, I'm I'm not proud about it, but um I am sorry I never told you that. Well, that's um I'm glad I'm glad you did. So when I was younger, I uh -huh. once took about three dollars from your wallet without asking you or telling you. And I'm really sorry about it. 
Oh my goodness, Jade. You must have had this out of your head and this guilt feeling for ages. How are you feeling? You know, taking money from someone and not asking them, it's not the right thing to do. And I'm just grateful that I could tell you and be honest with you. Thank you very much for being honest with me. I forgive you, babes. Thanks, Dad. I, I love you. you so much. I appreciate you calling and telling me. Yeah. And telling the truth. We've all made mistakes, but I'm grateful that you decided to kind of clean your slate, so to speak. So, you know, you're you're loved, and you're always loved. And um, let's um, let's sit down tonight and talk a little bit more about your adventures. So, all right. Cool. Thanks for your right. grace. Thanks for your grace, Mom. I think I was probably fifth grade. Uh-huh. I really, really wanted some Converse, yeah. and um, I was at my friend's house, and I ended up taking her pair of Converse that she had. Oh, Michelle. I know. Tell me more. I actually never told her that, that I took them, but that's just something that like I've been caring for a long time and I just thought it was time to to kind of come clean and to tell you about it. Well, I'm so glad that you did. How are you feeling about it now? Um, I'm feeling bad. I know that that probably has you feeling very embarrassed and maybe even a little bit sad. It would be a great thing to do to stop and pray and ask God for forgiveness. And the best thing of all is now that you've had a chance to talk about it, you don't ever have to keep that secret inside you anymore. Know that you have forgiveness from me and from your mom and ask for that same forgiveness from God and to just let him cleanse over all of that and healing to those hurt spots. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love you, sweetheart. I love you, too. Thanks for sharing with me. Was that the uh, response that you were expecting? A little bit, but it wasn't the reaction I was expecting from myself. So it just shows how much something can really latch on to you for a long time and even though I knew, I knew he would forgive me, it's so good to hear him say it. Step two, turn around and come home. Jesus talked about how to renew your heart through repentance. The Aramaic word he used to describe repentance was shuv. Translation, turn around and come home. This is not a dead end. This is another chance. Snap out of shame. It's a trap. When Jesus was alive, some people accused him of eating too many meals with too many sinners. They didn't like who he invited to dinner. In response, Jesus told them a story. He said, once there was a man who had two sons. The first son was upstanding and loved to follow the rules. But the second son was bold and thought he could do better on his own. So the young son said, yo dad, I wanna leave and in order to do that, I'm gonna need my inheritance early. So pay up pops. Just like God lets people go their own way, the father didn't put up a fight. He gave his young son a third of what he had and watched as he took the loot without looking back. The son traveled to a far country and scattered his money around town like it was his job. He lived a prodigal lifestyle, which is another way to say he was reckless with what he was given. Soon, his money ran out and famine hit the land. He got the only job he could find, feeding dirty pigs. He was stinky, he was hungry, and he was homesick. He remembered that even the servants at home had bread to eat. Bread is much better than pig slop. He thought, I'll admit that I sinned and I'll beg my father to take me back. Maybe he'll have mercy and let me be a servant. So he arrived at home, empty pockets, 
and smelling like a pig. He was afraid no one would welcome him back. But the second he hit the driveway, his father burst through the door. He ran to meet his son with a big smile on his face. The son confessed that he had messed up big time. And his father said, put the best robe on his shoulders, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And let's have a feast with the best food. You are still my son. You are lost, but now you're found. His father wasn't waiting to shame him. He was ready to celebrate. Meanwhile, the upstanding older brother, working hard in the field, heard the music from the party and was confused. Who could be partying when there was work to be done? When he saw the party was for his brother, he was furious. He had worked hard. He had never dishonored his father. He said, but, but, but he wasted everything. What about me? I never get a party like this. It's not fair. And his father said, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. Let's be glad that everyone is home under one roof. Your brother was lost and now he's found. Join us in the celebration. With this story, Jesus showed his critics that in the kingdom of God, everyone gets compassion. The younger son doesn't lose it by messing up and the older brother doesn't earn it by staying faithful. God is our good father who invites everyone to his forgiveness and his welcome home party. Don't sugar coat it! Hey, Loop. So I'm in my truck. I was on my way home and I was dancing. I was singing, just having a great time until I recognized that I am completely lost. Like I hit a dead end. I did not know where I was at. And I had to pull over in this random parking lot to try to find my way back home. Luckily, I have my GPS. And that's the tool I use to get me back on the right road that's gonna take me home. And what's so cool is that repentance is like our spiritual GPS. It's the tool that we use to turn away from the mistakes that we've made and to turn towards God. You see, God is calling us to come home. And when we repent, we get back on the right road and we get to make it home. It's just like what we heard in the story of the prodigal son. What we learn is that God's message is not, if you mess up, you're out. And we learn through the older brother that his message is not, if you get it right, you're in. What we know is that we serve a good God who loves us so much. And every single person gets his mercy and his forgiveness. We all get another chance. So don't get stuck at a dead end. Repent, turn around, and come home. Step three, refresh your mission. If you keep losing on the same path, get a new path. Don't relax into a cheap grace that says, I can keep doing whatever because I keep getting forgiveness. That's false freedom. Refresh your mission with new habits and accountability. Big stuff, tiny butt. We're gonna talk about what is accountability? It's holding responsibility for something or someone. We're all accountable to something like our parents, our teachers, even pets. So think about the responsibilities that you have, like doing your chores, your homework, feeding your dog and cat. Providing or asking for accountability is a great spiritual tool. So let's talk about that. Let's find an accountable friend. How do you do that? And who is that? Someone who helps you stay on target when you can't do it alone. Someone who helps you dig past the surface level. That's a friend who helps you stay connected to Christ. And because we're being open and real, boys stick with boys, girls stick with girls. All right, here's two tips for being accountable. Be honest. Find a friend who knows who you really are, someone who doesn't let you hide. They ask things like, uh, hey, how's it going with the such and such? They're not nosy, they're just being honest. And be humble. Find a friend who knows we're all accountable to God. It's someone who wants the best for you. So how do you do that? You listen and you stay focused. You're humble, not a know-it-all. So an accountable friend, someone who prays for you, encourages you, and tells you the hard truth when you need to hear it. 
Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. A fresh start plan. Confess. Turn around and come home. Refresh your mission. Don't sugarcoat it! That's right. We're not going to sugarcoat it, right? It's time for us to refresh our heart. And the way that we can do that is by confession and repentance. And when we say confession, we don't just mean apologizing because God isn't mad at you. The mistakes that you made, He's not just up there saying, you shouldn't have done that, right? God loves you. And even though we make mistakes, regardless of the mistakes that we make, He will never stop loving us. Repentance just allows us to open up, share about the mistakes that we made, and grow from them, get better. It refreshes our dignity and our mission. And so friends, it's time to open up and share about our mistakes so that we can have a fresh start. Uh, I have a confession to make. I don't want to eat this. Well, Riley, I'm glad that you're being honest and not sugarcoating it. Whew. Okay, well, if we have to eat it, let's just do it, right? You ready, Riley? No, <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. No, I got it. I got it. This is awful. Oh, one more bite. I'm going to get through more than one chew. Oh. Remember, don't, don't sugarcoat it. And when you mess up, follow the fresh start plan. Turn around and come home to God's forgiveness. Now, Riley, should we take another bite or sign off? Please, let's sign off. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. So remember, don't sugarcoat it. And subscribe. Make sure that you don't miss out on the next time that we try to tell you to don't sugarcoat race. Because it happened like like Groundhog's Day. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's our next episode, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's the episode. See you next time we did it. I had about sugarcoating. Well, who could that? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm.